So uh, how are you doing today, Ron? Good, man. Yeah, everything's fine. Yeah. Yeah. What about you? Uh, well, I'm surviving, you know, doing the same old thing. But uh, oh, anyway, I want to I want to kind of start this interview and talk uh, kind of about the present and then move back and then we'll get to the future. Uh, so, yeah, so you have your, your newest project, which uh, started in 2006, uh, DC4. Do you want to talk a little bit about the band? Um, sure. Uh, DC4 is, uh, uh, is comprised of uh, Jeff Duncan. Uh, which is the guitar player from Armored Saint, and uh, he's also singing in DC4, so both Jeff and I play guitars. Uh, his two brothers, Matt and Sean Duncan, are the rhythm section, and Sean Duncan was also in a band with Jeff Odin uh, back there in the 80s, and still playing today. And um, this is our second album. It's called Electric Ministry, and we're really happy with it, because it's a real, it's getting back to our roots of uh, just really like, um, you know, uh, good guitar riffs and energetic music, and and uh, it's a really strong album song wise, and it's on uh, um, Metal Blade in Europe, and uh, hopefully we'll get over there this year to do uh, a festival or two, and um, the uh, reviews on the album are really good. So we're really happy with it. That's the Electric Ministry album, the new album from DC4, and um, so that's that's about it for us. We're going we're going to go on this rock cruise, the uh, Monsters. Look, I can't, you know I can't remember what it's called, but it lives out. The, in, uh, the Monsters of Rock. Yeah, that's it. And we're lucky. The Monsters to go of Rock. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. With, uh, well, uh, uh, are yeah. we are we going to be able to expect at some point to see the DC4 release here in America or? Um, it's already available on digital, uh, so if you go to any of the uh, iTunes or uh, the many digital outlets out there, we've, we've, we've pretty got all that covered, pretty much got all that covered, so it's available. And you can also, okay, you can also we're also selling the CD as well off, off of our website, uh, uh, dc4rocks.com, so you can buy the, the CD from us as well directly. Great. So um, how did this... Uh this band get started? How did you guys all come together and decide uh, to form DC4? Uh, me and Jeff were um, on this little um, uh, a few shows out in Chicago doing covers with uh, this guy, Happening Harry, who uh, is a bit of a LA. Um, he's he's a uh, kind of bit of, bit of bit of a legend in LA. Happening Harry, he's always been around. You know, he's he's a uh, he's, uh, a really good guy to to meet people through and uh, and we were out there uh, doing a couple of gigs with him um, and I had never met Jeff before and, and I saw that what a great guitar player he was and then he took the mic and and uh, had this really killer singing voice as well so I thought wow you know I could I could uh, hook up with this guy you know team up with him and and then when we got back to LA he asked me to come and jam with his band DC4 so it just happened pretty naturally like that, really. Awesome. Well, that's good to hear. So yeah. uh, before before uh, DC4, uh, you had you had a few projects going on, but uh, the one that I I most want to talk about is Dio, and I've I've heard that uh, you know you've been going to on a few trips to Norway to perform some of the old uh, Lock Up the Wolves yeah. Uh, songs. Yeah, that's that, that's right. Um, Dio, of course, being uh, my uh, most, you know, I count myself very lucky to have played with Dio, and uh, and uh, I'm, I've, I've gone out to Norway over the last uh, year and a half, a couple of times, um, to perform some of that stuff. And uh, this drummer out there, Rick Hagen, asked, he put the whole thing together and said, "Oh, how'd you feel coming out to a doing a guitar festival, playing playing at a guitar festival?" And I said, "Yes, you know, that would be great." And then he said, "Well, look." Why don't we put a couple of gigs together around it? And um, this was actually um, before anyone heard that Ronnie was ill. And um, so we, we, we continued and we did it anyway. And, and um, of course, each time I've done it, we've, we've, we've made sure and donate some money to um, 
the Ronnie James Dio Stand Up and Shout Cancer Fund. Um, so I, I took that money to Wendy and uh, made sure it was okay with her that I was doing this. And um, so I'll be going again this year at some point. We haven't decided when, but um, it's uh, it's a lot of fun. And you know, I feel I feel uh, we have to do that material justice because it's some of the greatest stuff, you know, greatest 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 rock. Uh, music ever so it's quite a burden to go out there and make sure you 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 do it justice and the singer's great this guy um, Patrick Johansson who's in a couple of bands in Sweden he's got quite a following out there uh one of his bands is called Astral Doors and the other is called Lion Share and uh, he's kind of he's kind of the nearest nearest thing to you to you'll get to to Ronnie's sound um, he's one of the best guys out there today to sing his songs, I think. Well, I, you know, I've, I've had the privilege of, of meeting Dio before, and he was one yeah. of the sweetest guys I've ever met. You know, and like, oh, yeah. I, I've always wondered, you know, for, for you, I mean, you, you played with him, what, when you were like 17? Yes. Yeah, I, 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 I have to know, I have to know, like, how that was, you know, because... I mean, as as a kid growing up, uh, yeah. listening to Dio and then getting to perform in a band with him just a few years later, how was well, that? Well, I I think it was it it was a it was an incredible, wonderful experience. And Ronnie was always very good to me. Him and Wendy always looked after me, and um, you know they, they they brought me over at a young age and they took care of me and uh, um, and I I learned so many great things working for Ronnie that uh, I you know only afterwards you realise how how good some of the lessons that he had given me and the opportunity that he had given me. Um, I mean, I'm only talking to you today because of, you know, him deciding to bring me out here. And um, Yeah, as I said, he was always, he always treated me well, both personally and in business, and um, I could always rely on him. And he was a very uh, down-to-earth guy that... Um, you know, it was it was like family. It was like uh, being part of that organization was certainly like being family. And uh, and uh, you know, the type of guy that would um, you know uh, it, it call his friends at uh, at uh, Christmas and birthdays and everything, and took re- real importance in you know good good relationships. And uh, and uh, as I say, I was treated very well. Well, uh, I I thank you for for talking to me about this and stuff. Oh, yeah. And uh, I know pleasure. I know it mu- it's it's hard to talk about uh, old friends and stuff that have passed. But uh, I I also want to know uh, how, first of all how that experience came about, how you you were able to get into the band, and then if maybe you could share a story from uh, the Dio years. Uh huh. Yeah. Um, well, I had gotten into the band because I sent a. Uh, a um a cassette that I recorded in my house in England on my four track tape recorder. Um I put I put some guitar soloing on there, some you know, guitar by itself and I did a guitar solo against one of one of Dio's songs, Last in Line. I put a guitar solo against that and I just sent that off and the first time it got sent back to me because it never actually made it to him, it got sent back by the record company. So I uh, sent it back to the the fan club over here um, in Los Angeles, and uh, um, it was months before I got a call on it. And out of the blue, I got a call from Wendy Deer one evening, asking how I feel playing in front of twenty thousand people, and um, being being quite cocky kid, I I said, uh, "Oh, fine, you know, no problem." <laughs> and uh, Anyway, I was quite nervous at first to come out here and, and everything and uh, ended up just enjoying the whole thing. And, and uh, after my second audition, I got the gig. I got the gig, so I, I've pretty much been out here since all that time ago, and that was back in 1989. Um, and there's just there's just so many stories um, uh, that I could that I could tell you from from my days with Ron. What was that? 
What, what was it like the first time that you you walked out on stage with Dio in front of like thousands of people? Oh, that was that that was that was a total disaster, actually, Jason. It was terrible because <laughs> <laughs> I um I my guitar tech uh, Dave Clements pops his name is Pops, um, who I still mm-hmm. see around every now and then. I, I know he's still he's working a lot. Uh, he he had. He had run to the side of the stage where we're, we're ready to go on stage, and this is in front of 20,000 people um, supporting Metallica. On uh, we were the special guests for Metallica on the And Justice for All tour, and uh, in Europe, we played like five dates with them, and uh, the the crowds all warmed up, and the lights are down, and everything, and the intro tapes running, and and Dave runs to me and says. Uh, should I, hey man, should I turn on your distortion? Should I turn on your overdrive uh, setting? I said, no, it's okay, man. I'll just, I'll just hit it when I get out there. So uh, the uh, the intro tape gets, you know, more and more intense, and then this this Simon, the Simon Wright, the drummer, hits this big loud drum roll, you know, big dr- drum fill, and I run out on stage, and this this, t- you know, completely dark stage with a spotlight on me. I run out there and uh, go to hit my distortion pedal, and I missed it. And I hit the off button on my whole rig. So, uh-huh. so of course, there was complete silence. And uh, and in this silence, I, I hear I hear these boos start to come from the crowd. Boos, boos, <laughs> fucking stupid, all booing me. <laughs> And then save the guitar text running around my feet like a crab, you know, like, you know, uh, scuttling around trying to find out uh, what had gone wrong. And he turned me on uh, and it was at the gig. The gig was all right from there. Well, a couple of guitars were out of tune. So I was just in a daze and, and I played, you know, on these guitars that were out of tune and God knows what. And after the show, uh, Ronnie was standing there in the, in the dressing room and <laughs> kind of had his arms folded and, I was like looking to the other side of the room, <laughs> and Wendy, Wendy uh, came up to me and said, "Just, just, just don't talk to him. Don't talk to him right now." <laughs> so obviously he wasn't very happy, you know, because Ronnie ran a, t- a tight ship, you see, and that's why he was, you know, he was. That's why his records were all great because he he demanded people around him to to be on their game, and uh, you know he wasn't he wasn't he didn't say anything to me. But I knew I'd better get it right the next night. <laughs> you know? Isn't and, it funny uh, how the first gig yeah. everything always goes wrong? <laughs> oh, it was just it's a like nightmare. it's almost like a hazing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. So uh, that really uh, humbled me. And the next gig, I was uh, I was very nervous, <laughs> really scared. <laughs> but uh, and that went fine and then it went fine from then so everything was okay you made sure that you didn't fuck it up again <laughs> that's right i made sure i didn't fuck it up again <laughs> yeah awesome yeah. so anyway uh you you were in the midst of uh writing for uh the second uh dio album that you were uh, to be a part of when uh dio rejoined black sabbath uh, uh correct actually that's not that's not strictly true uh actually that's not true at all really what what had happened oh. um uh, when when Ronnie was considering going back to Black Sabbath, I, I think he was on the fence about it for a while, and he had me over to his house 